Is your flow stuck in an infinite loop? Not sure how to get out of it? In this Microsoft Power Automate tutorial, I'm going to show you three ways to avoid an infinite loop. Keep in mind that there are more ways to avoid the infinite loop than what I'll cover in this tutorial. Choose a solution that works best for you. What causes an infinite loop? An infinite loop is caused when your flow is triggered upon a file or item being modified and ending with updating the same file or item. The update item or update file properties action in your flow will cause your flow to trigger itself and eventually the flow will turn itself off from being triggered so many times. Personally, I try to avoid using the flow triggers that trigger my flow when an item or file is modified. Instead, I like to use the recurrence trigger. The recurrence trigger can allow you more control over how often your flow runs. You can set it to run first thing in the morning, at the end of the day, every hour, once a week, you get my point. Customize this trigger to suit your needs. In this demo, I'm using the Get Files Properties Only action. It's always best practice to filter out your files first before using an apply to each action to loop through them. The same applies if you are using the Get Items, List Rows Present in a Table, Get Emails, Get Events, basically any action that returns an array of items. Keep in mind that the list rows present in a table action can only accept a single filter query. If you need to filter out the rows by more than one condition, use a filter array action. If you aren't sure how to use the filter array action, click here to check out my tutorial. The get files properties only action returns files and folders. To return files only, you'll need to use a filter query. We'll use a hidden column to filter out files only. In the filter query field, type FS OBJ type. Ensure the FSO and T are capitalized. Enter EQ for equals to. To return files only, enter a zero. If you'd like to return only folders, enter a one. Whenever I use a filter query to filter out items or files, I always like to output the count of filtered items or files in a compose action. I find this helpful when building and testing a flow as I can easily verify if the number of filtered items or files is what I'm expecting. Insert a compose action. Add an expression. Use the length function. Select the dynamic content tab and insert the value dynamic content from the get files properties only action into the length function. Run a test. If your files are on OneDrive, you can use the list files in a folder OneDrive action. When possible, select a specific folder to reduce the number of files returned from this action. I'll add additional conditions to my filter query and run another test. Now that this action is filtering out the files that meet my criteria, I'll add a condition check to ensure that there are files returned before continuing on with my flow. If the count of files is not equal to zero, I'll insert and apply to each action into the yes branch to loop through each file returned. If you'd like your flow to perform any actions if the file count is equal to zero, add those actions into the no branch. By using a recurrence trigger instead of an automated trigger, you can avoid the infinite loop by setting a specific schedule for when you'd like the flow to run rather than relying on an item or file modification to trigger the flow. Depending on your scenario, you might be able to avoid the infinite loop by adding a trigger condition to your flow. If you don't know how to use trigger conditions in your flow, make sure to check out this tutorial where I cover four ways you can use trigger conditions in your flow. In this demo, I have a SharePoint list of invoices. When the status column of an item changes to ready to send, I'd like the flow to send a client their invoice. Once the invoice has been sent, I'd like the flow to change the status of an item from ready to send to sent for payment. If you want to build a similar flow and your flow looks like this, it'll re-trigger itself. 
Let's go over why that is. This trigger doesn't use trigger conditions, which means that this flow will trigger every time a new item is created or modified in this list. Because this flow ends with updating the same item that triggered this flow, it'll end up triggering itself each time this flow runs. When I save my flow, Power Automate even warns me that this flow may result in an infinite trigger loop unless I've added appropriate condition checks to prevent it from triggering itself. Although this particular example doesn't create an infinite loop, it's always best practice to include trigger conditions to prevent your flow from unnecessarily triggering itself. Because my update item action changes the status column value, the condition action I have in this example prevents the flow from updating the item again. In this flow, I have a trigger condition that checks to see if the item that is modified has a status of ready to send. Since the default choice of the status column is set to pending, when an item is created, the status column is set to pending and will not trigger this flow. However, if an item is modified and the status column is changed from pending to ready to send, this flow will trigger. Because this flow uses a trigger condition, the condition action I had in the original flow to check the status of the SharePoint item is no longer needed. After the email has been sent, the update item action will change the status column from ready to send to sent for payment. Let's run a test. I'm going to refresh the runs to ensure that the flow doesn't re-trigger itself. Here in SharePoint, the status of this invoice has been changed to sent for payment. Another common scenario is to update a column if a person column isn't empty. In this demo, I have a SharePoint list of tasks. I want to create a flow that will notify a team member or members as soon as they've been assigned to a task. Once the notification has been sent, I'd like to update the notification sent column with the date and time the assigned to user or users was notified. I'm using the same trigger as the previous flow. I have a trigger condition that checks to see if the assigned to column is not empty and if the status column is equal to in progress. If the SharePoint item has a status of in progress and a user or users have been assigned to it, it'll send a team's notification to whoever has been assigned to the task. Once the notification is sent, it'll update the notification sent column with the date and time the assigned to user was notified. However, this flow will still trigger itself. Let's take a look at this flow's trigger conditions again. This flow will only trigger if the assigned to column isn't empty and if the status column is set to in progress. We need a way to prevent the flow from triggering itself again after the notification sent column has been updated. To prevent the flow from triggering itself again, we need to add an additional trigger condition to check and see if the notification sent column is empty. Because the notification sent column will be updated with the current date and time after the notification has been sent, by checking to see if the column is empty first, we can prevent the flow from triggering itself. Let's run a test. First, I'm going to modify an item where the notification sent column is not empty. The flow should not run. Next, I'll modify an item where the notification sent column is empty. I'll assign some users to the task. The flow shouldn't run because the status is set to pending. Now, if I set the status to in progress, the flow should run. And it does. The team's notification has been sent and the notification sent column has been updated with a timestamp. One thing you may need to consider in your flow is how to handle notifications if additional changes are made to the users assigned to this task. I won't be covering how to do that in this tutorial, but make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out when I get around to making that video. The last way to avoid an infinite loop in your flow is to use a service account. A service account is an account used to run automated processes, applications, and services instead of an individual user. If you don't have the ability to create a service account, work with your IT department to set up one or multiple service accounts based on your requirements. 
By using a combination of a trigger condition and a service account, you can effectively prevent an infinite loop by checking if the modified by email is not equal to the service account email. In this demo flow, I'm using the when an item or file is modified trigger. I've added a trigger condition to check if the modified by email is not equal to the service account email. In addition to checking if the modified file has a status of paid. If the file has been modified by any user other than the service account, this flow will be triggered. Since the update file action will be performed by the service account, the flow will not trigger itself. Let's test it out. First, I'm going to ensure that the service account doesn't trigger the flow. I'll change this item status to paid. The flow has not triggered. I'll switch it back to entered. Now as a user, I'll change this item status to paid. The flow should trigger, and it does. I'll refresh the flow runs to ensure that the flow hasn't re-triggered itself. In SharePoint, we can see that the item has been modified by the service account. How do you avoid infinite loops in your Power Automate flows? Share your tips and tricks in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful and plan to use one of the techniques covered in this tutorial, please consider giving it a like. Do you find writing expressions hard? Can't seem to access dynamic content to insert into an expression? Are you super confused when it comes to nesting functions? If so, check out this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on my next tutorial. Thanks for watching!